Well, welcome everyone to the family of Christ. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to always be about three things. What's our purpose? What's our goals? Always to meet Jesus, make friends, make a difference. Obviously today it's an exciting time of the year where it's first of all my wife's birthday today, February 27th, so kudos to Rach. Along with that, we remember that Lent starts on Wednesday with Ash Wednesday services, so we hope that you can join us at 6.30. There'll be imposition of ashes, it'll be the Lord's Supper, and we're going to be launching into our new Red Letter Challenge. Along with that, uh, remember that if you'd like to enhance our Holy Week and Easter worship services, there's going to be handball practice, choir practice starting up very soon, so be sure to look online or touch base with Deb Grevin about jumping into that. Also, right now we're going to have a little note, a little message about what's happening in our Red Letter Challenge. Ruth Waltman here with one more opportunity to get involved with the Red Letter Challenge. If you're not joining us in person right now, we totally understand, but we still want to have a way for you to connect with your church family. So join us online. Go to Facebook, search for the group Family of Christ takes on the Red Letter Challenge for Lent 2022. Request to join that group and then stay tuned on Wednesdays when we will post some small group Bible study videos and discussion questions for you to participate in. This is a closed group, so you're welcome to discuss anything that you'd like and church staff will be jumping in throughout the week to discuss with you. If you have any questions, give me a call at the church office. Well, let's make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in confessing our sins to the Lord by reading what's on the screen today with me. Jesus, I want to be a follower who clearly shows the world a clear reflection of you. Forgive me for failing to live up to the calling you have given me. Too often I find myself too busy to spend time with you. Too often my desire for other things has replaced you as the first priority in my life. Search my heart and show me where I have failed. Forgive me and make me new and strengthen my faith so that my life gives all glory to you. By well, having sincerely confessed your sins, know the good news of Christ, that it's my duty and delight to share with you that because of everything Jesus has done, through his perfect life lived in our place by offering his life lovingly willingly sacrificially on calvary's cross to pay the full payment for all of our sins the sins of the world and knowing that jesus has risen ascended and reigns for all eternity as you trust in him know that you are fully forgiven in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen Let's take a look at two actually very short scripture passages today. The first one is written by Jesus' brother uh, from James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. He writes, Don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not, getting, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Here ends our first reading. Today's gospel message is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 and following. And this will be what we focus a big chunk of today's message on. Jesus says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it didn't fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Here ends today's gospel lesson. 
Let's profess our faith together. Remember, every time that we're doing this, we're simply saying here are the foundational truths in which our life, our faith is built. And at the same time, as we remember these truths of God's word, it helps keep us, prevents us from falling to false teaching. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's take a look at today's sermon video that will set up our message again about are you ready for a challenge? Well, I'm so excited about this red letter challenge that we're going to be jumping into together throughout the upcoming 40 days of Lent. And as we read the devotions and complete the daily challenges, our faith will be fortified, our discipleship will deepen, and our impact in our surrounding community will be immeasurable through our prayers, our service, and our sharing the good news of Jesus. But you know, sometimes our good intentions get really messed up, don't they? For instance, I remember back in college, there was this kid from St. Paul who years ago drove to the University of Minnesota to pick up his date from her place for the very first time. And their plan was to go to dinner at that Nankin Chinese restaurant in downtown Minneapolis. Maybe some of you older members like me will remember this place. It was just a few miles away from where that young lady lived. But keep this in mind, this was long before the days of GPS or Google Maps. Nevertheless, this guy immediately takes a wrong turn onto the freeway. His date doesn't want to assertively say, you have no clue where you're going. So after making several wrong turns, they eventually end up in South St. Paul. So close and yet so far. By the way, they did finally get to the Nankin, and that guy must have been incredibly charming because his date eventually married him anyway. And you can ask Rachel about that sometime later this week. But here's the deal. When you're going to Minneapolis, you don't want to end up in South St. Paul. The same is true when it comes to our spiritual walk with God. The Lord has great plans for each one of us, but sometimes we veer off course, don't we? Sometimes we take, uh, for example, think about the Israelites. For 2,000 years, since the days of Abraham, they had been waiting, they longing for the arrival of the promised Messiah, the Savior of the world. But when Jesus finally arrived on the scene, instead of worshiping and following him wholeheartedly, the multitudes reject and crucify him. Once again, so close and yet so far. Or what happened soon after the birthday of the early Christian church? You know, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. On the one hand, many people were led to faith in Christ, and that's great news. But on the other hand, many of these early believers struggled to extend Jesus' grace, love, and acceptance to outsiders. Once again, so close and yet so far. And earlier in today's sermon video, we learned how many who are outside of Christianity, how they view you and me and all Jesus' followers. They often see us as being negative, judgmental, hypocritical, mad at the world, out of touch, and insensitive. And we might ask, how can this be? I mean, after all, the same Jesus who embodies and exemplifies perfect love, perfect grace, perfect joy, he lives within us. So shouldn't others around us clearly see Jesus through our words, our actions, and behaviors? Well, that's why the Red Letter Challenge was birthed. 
why it was developed in the first place with this one goal in mind. That if we express and exhibit who Jesus really is in our day-to-day -day lives, that people will fall in love with him. After all, who wouldn't fall in love with a loving, forgiving, and saving God? Even more personally, when you and I reflect on all that Jesus has already done for us through his life, death, and resurrection, how could we possibly represent him in ways that miss the mark and repel people, drive others away? Instead, transformed, empowered, and motivated by the Holy Spirit and the good news of salvation, we do everything possible to change people's false and negative perceptions about Jesus and his church. But how do we do this? Well, how does the Holy Spirit use us in the process of leading others to Jesus and growing as his lifelong disciples? Well, the key is knowing what to shoot for. Back in the 2004 Athens Olympics, there was an American sharpshooter named Matthew Emmons, who is far and away the best shooter in the world. Here's a picture of him practicing. And the question that year of the Olympics wasn't who was going to win the gold, but who would take the silver and bronze. And the key for these skilled Olympic shooters is slowing down their heartbeat as much as possible and then firing their rifle between heartbeats. Well, going into the 10th and final shot, Emmons was in first place by a mile. All he needed to do was hit the final target in order to win the gold. Piece of cake, right? Well, he took careful aim, fired, and sure enough, it was a bullseye. He did it, except for one small fact. He accidentally shot the target one lane over. And that crossfire earned him a score of zero. And it cost him not only a gold, but any of the three medals. He instantly went from first to eighth place. Why am I bringing up this story? Because even if you're the greatest shooter in the world, if your focus and aim are on the wrong thing, you're never going to hit what needs to be hit. Well, in the same way, if we as Christians aren't aiming at the target which Jesus has established for us, we'll do more harm than good. People will, will view us as being judgmental or divisive or out of touch. So what's the target? What are we supposed to be aiming at? What does Jesus want you and me and all of his followers to place our focus on? Well, it's his actual words and teachings daily put into practice. Let me repeat that again. It's his actual words and teachings daily put into practice. Now, some of you are thinking right now, that's it? That's the big idea? Yeah, that's it. The red letter challenge is taking Jesus' authentic words, which in your Bibles are often identified and singled out with the color red, and doing exactly what Jesus tells us in today's gospel from Matthew chapter 7. He says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and does what? Puts them into practice. Is a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it didn't fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But conversely, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Jesus wraps up his famous Sermon on the Mount in which he introduces his kingdom's countercultural concepts with this story, this illustration that sounds like the children's story of the three little pigs, doesn't it? I mean, Jesus directly says, if you want your house to stand up and not be blown over by winds or floods or by the big bad wolf, then practice what I'm preaching. Do what I say. So constructing a life that lasts is built on a firm foundation of consistently hearing and implementing Jesus' words and teachings. What are these red-letter words of Jesus? Well, we could give all kinds of examples. 
How about what he says in John 14, verse 6? I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. How about Matthew 6, 33? My old confirmation verse. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, right? Our daily needs like food and clothing will be given to you as well. How about Jesus' great invitation? Matthew 11, verse 28. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. How about what Jesus declares in Matthew 16, verse 26? What good is it profit a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits or loses his soul? How about what Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 and 38? What's the great command of the Lord? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And then secondly, love your neighbor as yourself. How about John 3, verse 5, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus at night, he says to him, no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless he is born of water and the Spirit. And here's the clincher. Jesus said he was going to be rejected, suffer and die, and then rise from the dead. And that's just exactly what happened. So when he promises in John chapter 14, verse 3, that John 14, verse 3, that he's prepared a place for us in heaven is going to come back so that you and I can be with him forever, that's a done deal. Remember how Jesus ends this illustration? He says, anyone who builds their life on any other foundation, any other purpose or priority other than on him, and remember, hearing and putting his word into practice is doing so in vain. None of these things in the end matter. They aren't going to last. What does endure? What Jesus promises in Luke chapter 11, verse 28. Blessed are those who not only hear the word of God, but obey it, keep it. Jesus' brother James says this truth even more simply in his book, James chapter 1, verse 22. We read this earlier. Don't merely l- just listen to the word, right? And so deceive yourselves, but do what it says. That's the big I- idea of what we're going to be doing over the next 40 days in this red letter challenge. Taking Jesus' words, the red letters in the Bible, and literally putting them into practice. And not only is this going to transform us, but also the world in which we live. You know, when Zach Zender, who's a pastor now in Omaha, Nebraska, wrote this Red Letter Challenge, he noticed that most of what Jesus said and taught his followers is centered around three, five, or around these five principles. And you see them right here on this sign. They're around being, forgiving, serving, giving, and going. First of all, being. Before Jesus commands us to do things for him and through him and in his name, he first of all invites us to be in relationship with him, to spend daily time with him, reading his word and responding with prayer. Our relationship with Jesus determines how effective we'll be at actually doing the things he commands. And then the second thing that Jesus talks about is forgiving. Jesus is all about grace. Yet how often do all of us struggle at times to forgive others, to forgive ourselves, and to daily receive the full forgiveness that Jesus has already won for us on Calvary's cross? Yet to exemplify Jesus, on a daily basis to others, we need to receive and understand God's grace in order to effectively extend it to others. What's the third area that Jesus spends a lot of his teaching on? Serving. You know, the more time that we spend with Jesus and bask in his forgiveness and love, well, the Holy Spirit then moves and empowers us through this. Knowing all that Jesus has done and continues to do in our life every day, that motivates us to serve others. We want to be the hands and the feet of Christ in our communities, blessing and serving our neighbors who are in need. The fourth big chunk that Jesus really spent a lot of time talking about and teaching is giving. 
Now, the, tub, the subject or the topic that Jesus talked about most often in the four Gospels is the kingdom of God. But a close second was money. 16 of his 38 parables teach about how to handle money and possessions. But here's the overarching principle when it comes to giving. Jesus wants his followers to be content, generous, and to not fall in love with stuff. Fifth, Jesus spent a lot of time talking about going. You know, it's no coincidence that many of Jesus' last words in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John center on the fact that Jesus not only wants us to be his hands and feet serving in the community, but he also wants us to be his mouthpieces. He has done the hard part already at Calvary's cross. Now he gives us the privilege of doing the fun part, of just sharing the good news of forgiveness, love, and eternal salvation that Jesus has already won for us with others in our circles of influence. So there are the five things that we're going to be really pouring into throughout this Red Letter Challenge. Being, forgiving, serving, giving, and finally going. These five principles, these five targets, characterize what it means for us to be Jesus' followers. So are you up to the challenge? Over the next 40 days, as we embark on this journey together, we're going to read uh, this book. Every day there's going to be a devotion in there, right? The Red Letter Challenge. And what are we going to do? We're not only going to read each day's reading, but then there's going to be a challenge that is at the end of each day that we can put into practice. And then we're going to be officially starting the Red Letter Challenge this Tuesday, March 1st. That'll be day one. Read it in your books. Then there are plenty of adult and children's books available here at church, so be sure to stop by either, you know, Monday or Tuesday and pick up one of those books. And then to get started even before we start on Tuesday, read the introduction, pages 6 through 17 in your Red Letter Challenge book. You can do that either this afternoon or tomorrow. Now remember, each of these books costs $20 online, but we're asking a suggested donation of $10 book per book because we want everyone to participate in the Red Letter Challenge. And if finances are super tight for your family right now, grab one of these books. It's our gift to you. Join us on the next six Wednesdays of Lent and on each of the following Sundays. Every Sunday and Wednesday, we're going to preach on something different. And beginning with Ash Wednesday service this week at 630 Remember, here's what's going to happen. We're going to have a short sermonette. We're going to watch a, a short video each Wednesday night. And then right at the end of service, we're going to get together in small groups and just discuss a few questions each week with the same group of people for the six weeks of Lent. And remember, here's the key. All of us want to just continue to grow and grow as disciples of Jesus. I'm going to be your tour guide. And here's the deal. As we're going on this journey together, the number one, the most important thing is be sure to invite Jesus to join you throughout this whole tour, this whole journey together. Let's have a blast looking at the red letter challenge, the red letter words of Jesus, and allowing his spirit to mold and shape and form us more and more into the image of Jesus today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word that reveals that you are our creator, our savior, our guide, and Lord. Help us to not merely know your word, but to faithfully put it into practice every day. Change each of us to become more and more like you. Help us to be more forgiving and giving, and enable us to identify whom we should serve and with whom we should share the good news. But first, Jesus, remind us that we're your loved and forgiven children who are in an eternal relationship with you. Thank you for forming that forever friendship with us individually. And Jesus, thank you for the upcoming season of Lent. Draw us closer to you throughout the upcoming 40 days. Renew us, heal us, deepen our faith in you 
in our compassion for our neighbors. Help us to remember that nothing is important in our lives unless it glorifies you in some way. And Lord of the nations, hear our prayers on behalf of the millions of people wandering the face of our earth, searching for safety, stability, work, and basic human needs. Incline to peace the hearts of those who lead the nations, especially today we pray for the people of the Ukraine. Protect them from further harm. Bring godly resolution to this conflict as quickly as possible. Hear us now as we pray for those whose bodies need your strengthening and healing, especially Joel Boson, Jackie Elong, Penny Goldman, Debbie Kelly, Glenn Jakes, Karen Larson, Ardell McLaughlin, Lois Stover, and these people whom we silently lift up to you. And Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Can continue to comfort all who mourn today, especially Bruce McKinnon's family at the death of his father, David. Be with Carol Lace at the death of her brother-in-law, David. And with Bob Sanino at the death of his brother, Bruce. Pour out your peace on each of these individuals and their families. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor and worship. In the name of Jesus, who has taught us all to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his perfect peace. Amen. Let's head out today with these sending words right from God's word. Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Jesus says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Well, knowing there is no greater cause than living for Jesus, let's go in peace and serve the Lord. I look forward to you jumping in on the Red Letter Challenge, and let's have a great Lenten season as we're drawn closer and closer to our crucified and risen Savior Jesus.